Hi guys, this is a video on the bell jar. Just going to be something quick. Um, if you want my other video on Sylvia Plath, then have a look, which is just about her life. And um, this was this was one of the requests. You can catch me on Instagram at Stacey Way, or if you want other videos, more videos, then you can subscribe to my website www.stacyway.co.uk. Um, the bell jar. Then I'm just going to look at it via feminism. Um, on this video. We've got quite a lot going on. Um, the big the big image of the bell jar then um, is this idea. Remember, bell jars are used in scientific experiments. So uh, it's like a vacuum. So the bell jar, if we're looking at, looking at the book through a feminist um, perspective or a feminist lens, then the bell jar is this idea that she is trapped because of her feeling of inadequacy. Um, we have Sylvia Plath setting up um, gender roles at the time that the book was written and obviously the gender roles present our authoritative powerful men versus our subservient women or what is expected of women which was marriage kids and um, sense of decorum um, and the main character Esther we know is kind of um conflicted here so it's a patriarchal environment therefore she is subjected to particular expectations as I said marriage uh, babies and be behaving like women were expected to behave. And we get the statement, it's like being brainwashed. Um, and Esther views this life as intolerable, doesn't she? Um, probably not massively different from Sylvia Plath's own life as well, um, in terms of her background and the things that she suffered in terms of trauma and her own experience. Um, Esther moves throughout the novel from a sense of fearing determination to inadequacy and this comes as a result of the men that we encounter and the men we encounter are powerful they are authoritative they are women haters they are uh, womanizers and men in this book are kind of can I use the words allowed? Allowed to be promiscuous, whereas the women are expected to be chaste. So again, we have this hypocritical um, presentation of gender roles. Um, the women are obviously inferior and therefore they are oppressed. So we've got this massive idea that throughout this book, women are opp oppressed by men and by the um, society that they are growing up in and existing in. Um, the woman, one of the women we meet, JC, is domineering and opinionated. And because she is, we don't find out much about her family. So it's almost like through the feminist lens, you are either fulfilling the gender roles and expectations, which is you are a woman of decorum, married with children, or you are um, a woman of the workplace. And therefore, you can't have both is almost the idea that we're being sold in this book. Um the consequences of not conforming then are clear, aren't they? Um, and we see Esther uh, attempt three suicides. And because um, after the third attempt, what she does actually learn or what she does realise is that she has power over her own body. She makes a reference about um, sex, doesn't she? And how Buddy views sex, which is completely different to her own view. Um, the As I see it, Buddy is a hypocrite. The man's world and the, the woman's world are presented as different. Sexual freedom is limited, which we know when we look at feminism, that that's kind of one of the, the big expectations of women, that their sexual freedom is kind of reined in, isn't it? And, and there's certain expectations placed. Um, she says she couldn't stand the idea of women having a pure and single life. So again, that is showing you that it's almost like Esther does not fit into this society and she is a staunch feminist well before um, other women were, if that makes sense. Um, she, when she starts to feel this pressure to conform, that is in turn, I suppose, the birth and the driving of the mental illness within her, isn't it? Um, we see her mother, don't we? And her mother has to take on a male role, if you like, by going out to work and she remains impassive and therefore her and Esther aren't quite that close um, and the gender roles with the mother particularly become blurred don't they um, and then we have this big image of the fig tree the fig tree is a fantastic image in the bell jar isn't it because it sets up 
the choices that she imagines having. So some of the choices she 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 imagines a husband, she imagines uh, a branch being a husband, a branch being a port, a branch being a professor, a branch being Africa, a branch being uh, other countries. And the fig tree sets up, <clears throat> I think, this isolated female figure and potential choices. But then again, because she exists in this type of... Um, socially restrictive environment for women then what choices does esther really have yes she has that realization uh, at the end but again um is realization and fulfillment the same thing here in the bell jar um naturally go on my website if you want to have a look at videos on feminism and, th and things like that then th there's more there but that was a five minute video on the bell jar through a feminist lens i hope in some way it was useful catch me on instagram or my website massive good luck guys